Oh, oh, sorry, um, I should say Can that I have to leave now because my wife is sick and I want to be home early. So it's a bit confusing that I'm moderating this and then suddenly I disappear. Please excuse me. Um, Jeremy is going to pick up the mic uh, after I'm gone and when there's a short, like when we have question sessions on human moderate tech. Okay, thank, thank you very much and hopefully we see this big group at our next Pi Newsletter group meetup again. This is the biggest group that we had in, in months, so that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this working or? Oh, that's for recording. Ah, okay, for just for recording. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. So I'm uh, I'm uh, Matteo. You can go to the. Okay. Before introduce to ourselves, actually, we are part of the. I'm leading the the data engineering group in uh, in DBS. Actually, we are a, a group of uh, of uh, uh, fifty engineers. Actually. Uh, about 20, half and half based in here in Singapore, half based in, in Hyderabad in India. And we basically take care of, uh, of uh, the development of all the software layer, all the software infrastructure that sits on top of our, uh, uh, of our data platform, actually. And we provide kind of like a self-service platform to the internal user. So before we start, I want to do a little bit of advertising, actually. Uh, next, uh, uh, we are hiring a lot, actually. Last, uh, in, 2000 DB in 2018, uh, DBS uh, increased his, uh, his uh, uh, number of people by 10%, actually. We hired uh, about 2,000 people and uh, pretty much all technology related people actually most of them are engineers both in singapore and 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 uh, and in hyderabad so and we do it with the uh, events as well so next uh, uh, weekend actually not the following one the the one after what is it the seventh uh, uh, we have this event hack to hire uh, basically it's a, it's actually a hackathon and with prizes hosted by dbs and uh, and in addition to winning the prize, you actually, it's kind of like an interview. So people get selected and at the end, uh, they, get a, uh, they can get a job offer from DBS. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to sign up. You just search and you just Google Hack to Hire Singapore. You can sign up. It's a two day uh, event, Saturday and Sunday, uh, where you can do all your hacking and then we'll have uh, uh, winners and then uh, if you're interested, you can, and, and if you are selected, you can also get a full-time job offer from DBS. Cool, great. Uh, having said that, let's, uh, let's start. So this is about, uh, uh, this is about uh, a, a, uh, uh, something that we have started in our data group uh, and specifically related to uh, scheduling. So how we, uh, we implemented uh, human-readable scheduling grammars uh, uh, using Antler and Python uh, for our uh, for our data platform. Uh, yes, as I said, a couple of introduction. I'm uh, I'm the heading the uh, data engineering group here in DBS, and uh, uh, Dario, who is working with the, in in our group, uh, he is basically uh, is basically leading the integration part, which takes care of various components uh, and integration across various components that we have. So uh, and one of the is uh, all the integration happening that we have between uh, Apache Airflow, that is the tool that we use, and all, all, uh, all uh, uh, our cluster, our, our Spark integration, uh, Cloudera, etc., etc. Um, so, the problem. So, if you take any of the uh, of the scheduling tool, most of these tools they use uh, cron-based grammar. So, it's a very simple grammar. So, we realized it that. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's okay, but sometimes we need much more complex stuff, especially uh, in a bank where uh, you have to uh, you have to schedule jobs uh, based on uh, business rules and not uh, not calendar days. Like this is a typical example of what we have: uh, run a job every Friday of the first month and the second and the third quarter, if not public holiday. Otherwise, uh, the next uh, uh, the following working day. Okay, so how do you express this using uh, a, cron a cron expression? It's basically impossible. So, so we said, okay, how can we uh, ha how can we uh, create a, a way for people to express uh, uh, express these uh, uh, these rules in uh, in an easy format? Um, 
I have to mention that our, all our jobs are metadata driven. So basically, we expect uh, users that sometimes they don't, they're not technical to uh, define a job, to build a job, and to schedule a job. So we have to give them a, a very easy to use interface uh, to allow to express these uh, these uh, these uh, uh, these rules. Um, all this fits into uh, Apache Airflow. We are extensively using uh, Apache Airflow. And uh, the limitation is that Apache Airflow uh, is entirely based on, on cron, uh, cron expression. However, uh, it's very much extensible. So we can write plugins. Um, we, luckily, we have a very good expertise in, on Apache Airflow. Uh, we are the number 10. Uh, contributor of Apache Airflow and uh, and uh, an official committer. And this I would like to thank Wari Shaodong. He should be here in the meeting, yes. He is the, the, the our uh, Apache Airflow committer. And we are now uh, adding a lot of features to, to the, 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 the official version of Apache Airflow. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Apache Airflow only supports uh, cron-based expression, but uh, we can easily write plugins. So we said, OK, let's write a plugin for Apache Airflow that allows us to uh, to uh, analyze this uh, type of expression and decide to execute a DAG or, or not execute it based on, uh, based on the rules. Uh, so we know that we had to parse, uh, we need to express that complexity. So how could we do it? Uh, the first option that we consider is uh, having a structure that allows you to uh, represent that information. So imagine like a JSON-based structure where you say, uh, I want to run on these days, on this month, uh, on this quarter, but I want to exclude some days. So you can build it, but it becomes very complex. It's become very, so especially for the user to express such a grammar with a hierarchical structure like this, it becomes too complex. So we discarded that option. The second option that we consider is using some kind of NLP. The problem with NLP is that it is not something entirely deterministic. So uh, you can, as uh, when you interact with the, with the software system which uses NLP, it might happen that uh, the system doesn't understand your request, which is okay if you are using uh, if you are using Google Assistant because you can uh, you can repeat your question, you can uh, you can try to let him understand, and sometimes it doesn't. But which is not OK in our case. If we don't understand the expression, that's a big problem. So we decided that the best way to, to approach the problem was actually building a custom grammar. Of course, this forces the user to, uh, to define the rule with a specific grammar. And that for that reason, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have built a small UI that allows the user to, to, uh, to make less mistakes as possible. But we are sure that uh, whatever we type, it, it's uh, easily understandable from a human perspective. Uh, and uh, what we type, we are sure that the system can also, can also understand it. So for this, uh, we uh, decided to use Antler, where, uh, which is basically a, a lexer and parser library. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a very overview. Then Dario will go into more details how this is implemented. So this is, uh, this is how we split up our parse tree. And, uh, and we, from the, uh, from the grammar, we basically derive our, our, our parse tree and use it for, to, to determine if we need to run uh, or not a job. OK, so I'll leave it now to Dario. Uh, it's OK. We can, yeah, we can just. Uh, uh, so just to give you an idea, this is how, I don't know if how many of you are familiar with Antler, uh, but this is, uh, this is how. Uh, this is how we express uh, uh, we express the grammar in Antler. So it's a, it's basically a BNF representation, and uh, uh, and you see here that uh, you can compose uh, uh, you can compose your expression token by token. Uh, this case, for example, we can say a, a day uh, can be let's say for example in this case a day can be any day or a day of the week or a day category and a day range, and then we have. Uh, and then we have the definition for each and all these tokens. So starting from the smallest token, you start building all, all, all your uh, complex expression. Um, so this is just an overview. Then Dario is going to tell you more about uh, how we go from the grammar itself uh, to parsing the expression and building the scheduler from, uh, from the grammar. 
so we change oh, okay okay come on okay so well the implementation is uh, quite easy so we will have just uh, an overview um, to go from the sentence to a list of uh, schedule uh, dates uh, we go through four stage uh, using three steps we we start from the sentence that it's a uh, a sentence like we saw in the beginning yeah like this one every friday of the first month uh, and so on should be no, no. Oh, this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a sentence like that. Uh, then with Antler, we go to uh, a parse tree. Uh, then based on the parse tree, we wrote some code uh, to uh, to convert uh, the the parse tree to a filtering pipeline. Uh, and at the end, we generate all the list uh, of dates. So, okay, well, this part uh, is uh, uh, mostly uh, managed by, by Antler. Uh, Antler, just, I don't know if you can see on this part, uh, uh, give us some tools uh, to, uh, to generate, to, yeah, to convert this, uh, uh, this uh, grammar definition to uh, some classes, some Python classes, a lexer, a parser, he furnish also a visitor uh, for the for the tree uh, that we can use uh, uh, in our code now well the tokens is a, uh, a format uh, understand by uh, by antler and then we have uh, these uh, classes auto generated uh, by the tools so in this case uh, uh, our grammar uh, practically uh, um, build uh, this tree where we have some uh, some nodes like this uh, that are uh, uh, that are uh, the master node. Let's say uh, this node is about days. Uh, this node is about months. Uh, here we have quarter. We can also have weeks uh, and years. Uh, in this case, uh, we just use uh, uh, some less words. Uh, and already in the grammar, we have. Uh, our pipeline, what we said before, because uh, we have uh, uh, our filtering pipeline based on days, uh, a filter based on months uh, and quarter. On the left side of the, mo the node, uh, we have uh, the qualifier that specify, for instance, Friday for the month is specified the first month, uh, uh, quarter, second, and third. But well, this part is uh, completely managed by uh, by Antler. Okay. So this is how, uh, how our uh, pipeline uh, appear. Uh, we, use, uh, we simply use a visitor pattern. When we find uh, uh, a spec uh, node, like day spec or month spec, uh, we create uh, a filter. And when we populate the filter with, um, with a qualifier, uh, the day filter is, uh, qualifier is Friday, well, and so on, it's not so so complicated. Okay, how the filtering uh, happen? How the filtering happen? Yes. Uh, our filter pipeline is, uh, uh, let's say, is a bit tight uh, to, uh, to our grammar uh, because uh, we have the same, uh, the same structure. We have uh, in the grammar we will find uh, inside uh, the pipeline we uh, we go through the pipeline through the till the bottom in the bottom we generate uh, the full list uh, of our uh, of our range uh, for instance if we are working on 2019 we generate all the dates from the 1st uh, January till the 31st of uh, December and then we go filtering like uh, like in a SQL query. Uh, so uh, at the bottom, we generate all the days, like here. OK, yes. 
Yes, then uh, there is also another approach. Uh, instead of um, generating that, it's to just create intervals. But well, at the moment, we are just working like this. So we generate the full uh, list of dates uh, of our grammar. Then we go uh, step by step in our pipeline. Here, we, uh, the year is a, a quarter container. It can contain quarter. So we just have uh, some methods that say, give me the second and third quarter. Then when we retrieve the, the quarter, we go ahead with the next step. From the quarter, quarter is a month container. So we have uh, our functionality to retrieve the first month for the quarter. Uh, we repeat the operation for every result of the previous filter. So we have the first month for the second and third quarter. And then the last step uh, where we generate, uh, where, where we retrieve the, uh, the current day. Uh, here, yeah, the month uh, is a week container, but it also a day container. And this is uh, the same for every container, because for instance, we can say, uh, give me every Friday of the second and third quarter. Uh, that, yes. In that case, uh, we, we don't have just uh, these, fr these Fridays and these Fridays, but we should have the, uh, the far Fridays for April, uh, May, June, July, and so on. Okay, so in this part, uh, we have the generation of the of the list. And yes, well, I didn't say at the beginning, other than, uh, um, other than select uh, which, uh, which day we want to schedule, we can also uh, specify a condition if it's not public holiday or if it's not working day, and uh, an alternative. Uh, if it's not public holiday, uh, otherwise uh, the following working day. You can see here in the tree, uh, we split the sentence in three parts. The first part uh, is the action, so every Friday, of, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the second part is the condition, that if not uh, public holiday, and then we have the alternative. The condition works, uh, oh, wait, this uh, allow us uh, for instance, here we have generated uh, the, all the Fridays uh, for the first months of second and third quarter. But uh, 19 April uh, is public holiday. Is the, what is the Happy Friday? That <laughs> something like that. OK. Uh, so the next working day after the 19th of April is the 22nd of April. Uh, how we do this uh, is, uh, well, with some uh, set operations. We get the main list uh, of our uh, working days. Then we generate the conditional list uh, with, the same, uh, uh, with the same algorithm. Uh, in this case, we retrieve uh, the list of our public holidays. That's the Chinese New Year and uh, the Happy Friday. Uh, we do an intersection between uh, these two lists uh, to retrieve the, the, this one. is just the day we want uh, to use. Uh, and in the intersection, we have uh, uh, the public holiday in this case. We apply a difference. So we retrieve just the public holidays uh, we have to work on. Uh, and then the last part, uh, the the otherwise section, the alternative, is just a search uh, back, back or forward uh, to find the correct result. Then we merge the result, uh, and we have uh, the follow list. And well, what's fast? So oh, here is a bit small. OK. Just. Uh, to have a quick overview. Uh, okay. Where is going? 
one. Oh, okay. But here is uh, the simply way we use to run. Uh, I can go on top. We use to run uh, our uh, our grammar. Here we set uh, uh, the current day. It is the day where the job uh, uh, have to be run. So uh, today is today. And then we call, uh, well, the call is down here with the schedule. This one is just uh, a check. We have uh, two uh, functionality. One is to check uh, if the current day is a day where we have to run the job uh, or not. The other functionality is to generate uh, all the dates uh, based uh, on this sentence. So, uh, well, schedule check, uh, we give the sentence every Friday of the first month, of the second, and third. Blah, blah, blah. We we pass the, the day where we want to apply the grammar, then a list of uh, public holidays. And then, uh, well, that's a parameter uh, to define uh, which is the, um, the week, uh, if uh, from Monday to Friday or to from uh, which other weeks there are, well, other weeks. Then if we run, we see uh, well, uh, our uh, the pipeline with the action uh, uh, every Friday, first month, second and third quarter. The condition, every public holiday, and the alternative. And here, the list of dates uh, generated, as we see before, the Fridays. The condition is simply a list of public holidays. Uh, here, we miss the first day because we start from the current days. The ter alternative we found uh, and the final result. Yeah. So uh, the question we have to run uh, this work, th this job today is false because, well, it's not Friday, unfortunately. And yeah, that's all. Yes. There's time for questions. So uh, for anybody well, have questions, if Mateo. you can. Pick it up uh, without the mic, that'd be good. But if you need the mic, let me know. Uh, does it consider a leap year, like uh, a day before a leap? I want to run a job, a leap year, the next leap year, the day before, and the day after. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Uh, can you repeat well, the question for the video? Sorry? Can you repeat the question for the recording? Uh, can you repeat the question for the recording? <laughs> <laughs> no, if, uh, if uh, sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to run a job. Next leap year, a day before, a day after. but you mean a day before uh, the leap day? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. It's uh, okay. Uh, can I run the job uh, uh, the next uh, leap year, a day before uh, or after? Uh, yes, uh, because we generate uh, the full set uh, of dates. Of course, in the future we cannot uh, we cannot uh, evaluate uh, past dates. We generate the full set of dates. Uh, well, we are generating the dates uh, for the public holiday we have uh, available. Because if we don't have the list of public holidays, we cannot uh, evaluate uh, if it's a public holiday or not. So we generate the full days uh, for every year, and we're just filtering. So uh, the previous day, instead of search in front, uh, we search back. Does it reference any business calendar? For example, if can I generate a date? Give me all business days valid in both New York and Singapore. Uh, valid or both? It's a, it's a very common problem in, in, uh, when you're booking trades that I want all business days which, which are valid in New York as well in Singapore. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, you can pass the business calendar yeah. to the tool. Actually, so then supports that. yes, yes. I mean, if you if you create a business calendar that is that is uh, basically uh, uh, basically aggregating multiple holidays of, of different countries, right. then then yes, then yes. I mean, currently uh, our use case is uh, one business calendar because we need business calendar country by country. Right. But yes, that that can be done as well. Um, can you give us a use case of this particular tool that you have built from a business point of view, from a user point of view? Because if somebody is a programmer who understands Prawn, 
will probably write it in Cron. But yes. But this is more like closer to natural language yes, kind exactly. of thing. So what is the business use case that you had in mind? When you well, the business it? use case is that, uh, so uh, let me tell you, uh, take uh, uh, ingestion pipelines. We have a lot of ingestion pipeline and compute pipelines, sorry. We have a lot of ingestion and compute pipelines. Uh, we have everything metadata driven. So that means basically that uh, you can define, let's take an ingestion pipeline, you can define all the parameters of the ingestion, uh, like where you're taking the file from, what is the format of the file, and in addition to that, you have to specify when you want to run your job. Now, all these parameters, they're not filled up by a programmer, but they're filled up by uh, what we call business analyst SMEs actually which uh, they don't know code but they are fairly technical they can they can they can write an expression they can say this is a CSV file that is uh, comma separated tab separated to basically configure the ingestion job so this is the, exactly the use case we have a metadata management tool where uh, where BAs go there and say uh, these are the parameters to run this gesture. The file is here. This is the format, and when I want to run it. Okay. So this is uh, this is our typical user. Sorry, I had a, so just now you mentioned Chrome, right? So actually, there are some use cases that we cannot we cannot really use Chrome to express. Let's say just now to give an example. I want to run a job every last day of of every month in the third quarter. How do you use Chrome expression to represent this? Actually, it's not the, the most simple one. I want. I just want to run this um, on the last day of each month. This cannot be represented by Chrome expression. So that is why we had this tool to help us arrange job at day level. So at, if it's which hour or which minute, we still rely on Chrome expression. But for this kind of complicated, actually, we can say it's complicated. So actually, Chrome does not really help. Yes, here the goal was not simply replace cron with a, let's say, uh, better grammar, but it was to cover use cases that uh, cron cannot support. Obviously, yes, we can we can also uh, represent cron expression here in, in more user friendly grammar, but that's what no, that was uh, that is not what the original purpose was was to support these complex uh, uh, scheduling scenarios. Uh, the question is very simple. Uh, we are very lucky here in Singapore, whereby natural disaster is not part of the game. Whereas in countries like Japan, you never know when the next strike will hit you. So my question to you is that using this method, uh, just in case an emergency strike, like the other day Hokkaido, you know, had a typhoon which is quite unexpected, so how do you deal with cases like this? Uh, will you be able to use this uh, without manual intervention or somewhere in the program in your passing tree whereby you cater for conditions that cater for uh, unexpected situation? Thank you. Okay, uh, now that feature is not there, but it, uh, uh, it could be possible to implement it. I mean, you could say, uh, I mean, I can imagine where uh, where you could have if uh, a public holiday or uh, no natural disaster happen actually, and the resolution of that token is dynamic. So we might have an API to 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 invoke. Probably, uh, Shaolong, you can comment more on 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 this actually. Uh, but yes, it would be possible. That's that's a scenario we didn't consider, but. Uh, uh, in that case, you know, at the end of the day, uh, how we look up or, or public holiday, we look up on a on a calendar that we pass to the uh, to the to the sentence. Uh, in the same way, this look up uh, could come from an API uh, that will tell us if uh, this day a, a, a natural disaster is happen or I don't know uh, a storm is uh, is forecasted. Uh, yeah, that that would definitely be possible. Yes. Said we can use API or whatever thing 
they say I just want to exclude anything, possibly from natural disaster for whatever else reason, I can just use that part to help us exclude in certain specific date or date ranges. Okay, you you want to show the token that goes into the public holiday. How we handle public holidays? But the code or the you you are you are mostly interested in the in the code itself or or yeah, the, the code itself because you show that you do set and then you do comparison and look forward right. Okay. But how does it trigger? How does it knows he needs to do this? Okay. Or maybe we can do it offline. Or I don't know. You want to do it here? As you prefer. Oh, I do it here. That's fine. If we have time, we can do it here. Otherwise, we can do it offline later. We we'll do it. Oh yeah, we still have about. Yeah, we still have time for that question. Okay. Okay. About five, ten minutes. Okay. 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 Well, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, as I said before, uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, day container class. That it's the the class that generates uh, generates yeah retrieves uh, the final uh, day list. Uh, so we have uh, yeah ordinal days, uh, uh, well relative days uh, is for the next following um, yeah. Sorry, just let me <laughs> review my code because okay the ordinal day yes is is uh, to retrieve uh, let's say the first month the first day of the month first day of the year first day of the quarter uh, so an ordinal day. We can have uh, uh, business days, uh, so also the first uh, working day, uh, second working day, and so on. For the holidays, uh, we simply have uh, get holiday days, uh, and we have uh, uh, a utility that can say as uh, if the, this day is a holiday or not. So here we just uh, retrieve. Uh, the holiday days, uh, oh, this one is not implemented. Okay, ordinal holiday days. Uh, if we want to have the first uh, public holiday, the second public holiday, and so on, uh, the implementation is mostly here for the day level. So uh, at, at the end of the day, it's just uh, a utility, a utility function. Yeah. Sorry? The parse tree is, uh, is retrieved from the calendar parser that is a class created from uh, Antler. So Antler is to take care uh, of the parse tree. Then uh, with the visitor, we go through the parse tree to bring uh, node by node uh, and put uh, information in, uh, in our filtering pipeline. So basically, you're just filtering for public holidays. Sorry? Uh, so basically, you're just filtering for public holidays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more, more than filtering, we generate the public <coughs> holidays and then we do a set operation. But what, what in Handler that triggers? Oh, in Handler? Uh, in Handler? Wait. Uh, we have a token public holiday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There we is have a token uh, public holiday which we, we, uh, we basically associate to all the public holiday company. Where you can show the grammar, maybe. Yeah, is the condition. Uh, well, it's not uh, for the, the condition, and we have uh, a day specification that is the same we have uh, on this side, uh, but in this case, uh, the qualifier is public holiday. So we build two lists, uh, uh, working day Fridays uh, and public holidays, and then we, uh, we, we do an uh, intersection. This is a really simple one, because I don't understand the domain. Why is public holiday not also on the left-hand side? Why does it only live in the condition side? What if I wanted to say, uh, you know, the do every public holiday in, in the first quarter? Yeah, well, because was... Uh, no, you can. Yeah, 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 you can. You can. So basically, we have a day specific, OK? Uh, and the day specification, public that includes Got a public it. holiday. So the general way is day specification that can be an ordinal representation, I mean the first day of the month, uh, or any public holiday, or uh, uh, any other form of specifying a day, actually. So does that answer your question? You good? All right. So we got time only for one last question. Hi. You mentioned that you are also have a GUI where you are enforcing the business analyst or the business user 
to follow a certain grammar how do you go about doing that because this is very fine right you can't just do it with a lot of controls and you can't use an lp so how do you enforce that part Thank so uh, the GUI is very simple. It's basically uh, is basically a, a autocomplete function uh, using Antler. Actually, there is a, a JavaScript library that allows you to generate a, a, a like intelligence like uh, autocomplete base of an Antler grammar. So basically, we can kind of suggest the user the next token, actually the possible token that he can use. And then, of course, we can validate uh, the expression on the back end using, using the parser. Okay, so um, thank you, Dario and Matteo. Um, if you have any other questions, you can take it offline later. Um, but the uh, video and the video will be on engineers.sg and the slides will be on parks.org.sg. So, uh, round of applause for Dario and Matteo.